the Damon Runyon Theater. Everyone knows Broadway is in New York. The Broadway, that is. It has a dozen aliases. But whether it's called the Big Drag, the Gay White Way, or just the street, it means that bustling stretch of midtown Manhattan that is at once garish or beautiful, hard-hearted or soft-hearted, cynical or naive, depending on how you look at it or feel about it. To some people, it can be all those at the same time. One of those people was Damon Runyon. Damon Runyon, one of America's greatest storytellers, knew people and loved them. And because he did, people loved him. Damon Runyon told his stories through the eyes and mouth of a character who seems to have no name. We call him Broadway because Broadway seems to be his only home. And he is satisfied with it and happy. He knows all the guys and dolls, and they know him. How Broadway makes a living is a mystery, and one we'd rather not solve. We accept him, and because we do, we accept his stories as truth. Anyway, here is Broadway. Thanks. One night, I am sitting in Mindy's restaurant on Broadway, partaking heartily of some Hungarian goulash, which comes very nice in Mindy's, when in pops a guy who is a stranger to me and sits down at my table. In short, I do not know this guy. But it turns out later that we are all calling him Tobias the Terrible. And how that comes about is quite a story, which I will tell in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Tobias the Terrible. As I am saying, I am partaking of Mindy's Hungarian goulash when in pops a guy who is a stranger to me and sits down at my table. I do not pay any attention to the guy as I am busy looking over the next day's entries at Laurel. But I hear him tell the waiter to bring him some goulash, too. By and by, I hear the guy making a strange noise. I look over my paper and see that he is crying. He is a very little guy, maybe a shade over five feet tall, weighing maybe as much as a dime's weight of liver, and he has pale blonde hair and a very sad look in his eyes. And from his looks, I can see that this guy does not belong in these parts. Well, I watch him cry for a spell, and... Naturally, I am very curious as to why he is crying. So I ask, uh, you will pardon me, but uh, why are you crying? <laughs> Perhaps it is because you have a tough day at the track? No. You do not look like a horse player. I'm not. You do not look like a person from these parts. No, I'm not. Then if you are crying about the goulash, you better dry your tears before the chef sees you, because the chef is very sensitive and may take your tears as criticism. The, the goulash is wonderful. <laughs> you need not be enthusiastic. It is just good. I, if I am bothering you, I will move away. You are not bothering me. But why you are crying is... I... Are you ever in love? I have never. And barring a bad break, I never expect to be. If you were acquainted with Miss Deborah Weems, you wouldn't speak that way. I am not acquainted with Miss Deborah Weems, probably because I do not know her. She... We... I... <laughs> with that, the little guy goes back to crying. And it touches my heart, because I am convinced he is leveling with the tears. Now, I have a naturally sympathetic heart for anybody as long as it does not extend to a touch for a fin, or even a less amount. So I get this little guy to tell me his name, which is Tobias Tweeney. This is an odd name, but it belongs to an odd character, so I let it pass. He tells me the whole story, which is as follows. My home is in Erasmus, Pennsylvania. Do you know where that is? If it is not within a stone's throw from where we are, I do not. Well, I am in love with Deborah Weems, who was in love with me until she changed her mind. What occasion is this chill? What? Uh, why is she not in love with you anymore? She thinks I'm not tough enough. 
Why does she not see this at first? You do not look like you are ever dangerous. I'm not. That's the trouble, Mr... Uh, Mr... You may call me Broadway. Well, Mr. Broadway, Deborah goes to the movies, and she has seen tough guys, and she has made up her mind that they are her ideals. Uh... To make things worse, there is a Joe Trivet in Erasmus who claims he once shook hands with a gangster. That is dangerous work. I don't believe him. I told him so. What happens? I... Look, why don't you go back to Erasmus and punch this Joe Trivet? That is what happened. You punches him? No. No? The reason I don't is because he has the idea first and punched me. That is when Deborah called off our wedding. She called me a rabbit. <laughs> Personally, I can see that this Miss Deborah Weems has got a point. But I do not mention it to Tobias. I wait for him to stop crying. And he goes on as follows. So I left town. I drew $200 out of the Erasmus Bank and came here. Why? Oh, I figure that if I can meet up with some real underworld characters, I can go back to Erasmus and make Joe Trivet look sick. Do you know any underworld characters? I do not know any such characters. And if I do, I am not going to talk about them. I have not yet met any tough characters, and until I do, I can't go back to Erasmus. Oh. If I could just go to a tough joint and see some characters, I could go back to Erasmus. Hmm. Uh, do you know a place you can take me? Well, your story touches me. I will take you to such a place. Well, it was maybe a couple of minutes later that Tobias Tweeney and I are in a taxi cab going up Broadway. Tobias is all eyes, which makes him look like quite a large rabbit by now. He turns to me and says as follows. Golly, Mr. Broadway, this is nice of you. If I hadn't met you, I would never meet any underworld characters. Yes, uh, look, uh, Tobias, if... Uh, I say, if we should run into some citizens who are, uh, well, who are not exactly your idea of a Boy Scout, I want you should not mention it. You, you mean they might kill us? I am crossing my fingers against such a happen. <laughs> Gee, look at all the lights. Uh-huh. Do you not have lights in Erasmus? We turn them out at 10 o'clock. Well, how does one find one's way around the town? It's not a very large town. It is not large enough for me and Joe Trivet. I see. Well, maybe you will point out some of the sights for me as we go along. I see most of them by day, but I do not recognize them. Tobias, you have nothing in me. I don't recognize them in the day either. Gee, I can hardly wait until I tell Deborah that I am out with a character. So I take Tobias Tweeney to Good Time Charlie's place, which is not a joint, but I figure Tobias will not know the difference. But the moment we go through the door, I am sorry, because who is present but a dozen citizens from different parts of the city, and none of these are a bargain at any time. But I take Tobias around and introduce him. Uh, Tobias, uh, meet Harry the horse. Gee, you ain't grog much, have you? <laughs> and, and and this is Angie the Ox. Where did you get this, Broadway? Angie the the Ox? You don't like the name, Tobias? Oh, it's wonderful. And this is little Mitzi. Hiya, Tobias. <laughs> so I introduce Tobias all around. Nice to and his eyes are growing like hey, saucers. I tell his story, and when I do, Tobias starts crying again. <laughs> and it affects little Mitzi who is just tossed around himself more than somewhat by a doll. Little Mitzi says to Tobias... I never hear of such an outrage in my life. If I have time, I will go back to the town with you and make this Joe Trivet hard to catch. Furthermore, I will give this Deborah Weems a piece of my mind. Yeah, right. uh, see, Broadway... Uh, yeah, Angie? You see you bring him here to meet some underworld characters? Uh... Well, yes, uh, that is what I say. Are you expecting to find them here? Well, I uh, wonder if we can get in touch with anyone who knows such characters and can arrange to have Mr. Tweeney meet them. <sighs> Although, personally, I loathe and despise characters of this nature. Hey, you guys, we got to talk this yeah, over. Yeah, Come sure. on. Yeah, we got to help this. Uh, yeah. Now, all this is very odd. Especially since little Mitzi himself is a character who the police dislike intensely. In fact, so much so that they are willing to give him a vacation on citizens' money. 
It is like wise, but Harry the horse, Angie the ox, and the other. But I say nothing, which is very smart, not only now, but at any time. Anyway, they are talking us over. And while they are, I see that Tobias Tweeney is asleep. It being after 3 a.m. in the morning, he is done in. He is still asleep in a chair when good time Charlie comes hurrying in. Hey, hey, you guys. Harrigan's outside. Harrigan, Harrigan. Harrigan. Yeah, I believe that is his name, and he is still a lieutenant in the police force, and he is in company with others of his ilk. A raid. And I am carrying a rod, which is awkward, because it'll be tough on anybody who owes the state some time. And I seem to remember owing some. The police are back and front. Can you hold them off, Charlie? I will stall, Mitzi, but Harrigan is a very determined man. You will stall until we can get rid of our guns. Yeah, all right. But you will please make it very fast, or Lieutenant Harrigan will take nothing to come into the door without opening it first. You will make it snappy, boys. I am uncomfortable, naturally. But the rest are even more so, especially since being caught with a Roscoe means large portions of grief. But there is no place to chuck the irons, there being an even dozen of said weapons. And then... Angie looks up and points to Tobias and says... Him! That Tobias character. What about him, Angie? Harry, now I ask you, does he look like a hardened character? He looks like nothing. But I do not see the reasons for this discussion at the present time. Look, we put our guns on him. Angie, you are a genius. Yeah. Mitzi, I thank you. All right. Load him up with rods. I put my rod in his pocket. Stick this in his waistband. Well, they all stole their guns on Tobias, who is so sleepy he just mumbles as they tuck the irons on his frame and in his clothes. When they finish, Angie looks at him and says, There, Harrigan will never find him. <laughs> who would think of looking for a gun on him? <laughs> Listen. That, I believe, is Harrigan and his gendarmes. We will sit down and look in this and... Well, well, well. Good morning, boys. What a nice gathering we have here. What, if I may be so bold, brings you out on such a night, Lieutenant Harrigan? I am restless at night, Harry, and I'm looking for company. I... Who's that? Uh, that is a friend of mine, Lieutenant Harrigan. Uh, by name, he is Tobias Tweeney. That an alias, Broadway? It is his given name. Where is he from? He doesn't look like a local character. He is from Erasmus, Pennsylvania. What is he doing here? I bring him here. What for? For a cup of coffee. <laughs> I see. It didn't keep him awake. He is not used to late hours. Okay. All right, the rest of you, line up for a frisk. Uh, a frisk? You are going to say just? Why? I am playing Roscoe, Roscoe, who's got the Roscoe. And if I find one, I will be very happy to recommend a sentence. I think I will find one. You mean you think we are carrying concealed weapons? Just line up. Not you, Broadway. I know you're clear. Okay, let's take you first, Angie. Hold them high, way up, like a good boy. Well, anything to oblige, Lieutenant. The rest of you face the wall and keep your noses against it. <laughs> well, how's that, Lieutenant? Well, you're clean, but I don't get it. All right, Harry, you're next. Hold him higher. Uh, I am troubled with a sore shoulder, which prevents me from obliging you to the limit Skip of it. my... Uh... Uh-huh. You, uh, are unable to find anything, Lieutenant? Don't you feel undressed without that Roscoe, Harry? It is a comfortable feeling. Metsy. I am ready for this indignity. Yeah. You are a very suspicious man, Lieutenant Harrigan. You should learn to trust your fellow men. My fellow men, I do trust. You're not in that class. Okay, you're clear. That I could have informed you of before proceedings began. I don't like the smell of this. You uh, could leave. Shut up. Okay, the rest of you. Well, Harrigan and his men make the frisk, but good. But there is nothing. Not a single rod, no place. And not once do Harrigan and his gendarmes look at Tobias Tweeney who is still deep in dreams. Then Harrigan finishes, and the look on his face is very odd when he says as follows. I find this very curious, very peculiar. 
It could be that you are given a bum steer, Lieutenant. That could be, Angie, and it's lucky for you it is a bum one. I am going to see my alderman. I am a citizen, and I got rights as such. Harry, you are not a good citizen. But I got no gun. That is correct, and I'm puzzled. All right, boys, let's go. Harry right, and his boys are just about to the door, and one and all are breathing again when... Wait a minute, what the... Holy mackerel. For a minute, there is no sound, because nobody is able to make one. We are all looking at Tobias Tweeney, who falls off his chair and lands on the floor, the 12 guns sliding every which way on the floor. Hurricane's eyes are popping a foot when he gets back his voice and yells, Grab that guy, boys. Grab me before he gets his hands on one of those rods. I've seen a two, even a three-gun man before. But so help me, this is the first time I ever see a 12-gun character. Hey, you, wake up. Wake up, hear me? Uh, Deborah, Deborah, is that you? And now back to the second act of the Damon Runyon Theater in our story, Tobias the Terrible. So, that is that. Tobias Tweeney is picked up off the floor with ten gendarmes grabbing parts of it. The next day, the newspapers are full of the capture of a guy they call Twelve Gun Tweeney. The papers give it a big play, and Harrigan gives out a statement that says 12-gun Tweeny is a bloodthirsty guy because he says nothing whatsoever, but only glares at them with a steely glint in his eyes. Although, of course, the reason Tobias stares at him is because he is too dumbfounded to think of anything to say. Well, I naturally expect that when Tobias figures this out, he will spill the whole business, and all the parties who are in good time Charlie's when he is arrested think the same way and go into retirement for a time. But it seems that when Tobias finally realizes what is the score, he is getting so much attention that it swells him all up, and he decides to go on being 12-gun tweeny as long as he can, <laughs> which is a nice break for all other parties concerned. So I sneak down to Judge Raskover's court the day Tobias is arraigned. The courtroom is packed with citizens eager to see this desperate character. The citizens are milling and pushing around. And there is much talk, which I hear as I push to the front. Well, guns he had on him. He's probably responsible for several revolutions. I think you're meeting him when he was in a bed, you... Lieutenant Harrigan took a chance in nailing this character. Yeah. This guy will be at 20 years. Maybe 50. They say he's a big guy, maybe close to 7 feet tall. Well, I listen to all this and wonder what is going to happen when said citizens get a look at Tobias Tweedy. Then he is brought in. There he comes. Don't stand too close. Maybe he's still got a couple of guns they didn't find. <gasps> a dead hush falls when they see Tobias. Tobias is smaller than usual. He is some heads under the shortest citizen in the courtroom, and his rabbit face is quivering. But he stands there as proceedings go on as follows. You will please rise. <laughs> In comes Judge Raskova, who takes his place on the bench. Good morning. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Judge. The judge adjusts his glasses and looks down and says, Where is the prisoner? This is Tobias Twainy, Your Honor. Where, Lieutenant Harrigan? Here, Your Honor. That is the prisoner? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, just a moment. I think my glasses are steamed up. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and now, uh, did you bring in the right prisoner? This is Tobias Tweeney, Your Honor. You mean to tell this court that this, uh, this half portion is the desperate 12 gun Tweeney? Yes, sir. Mr. Tweeney, are you uh, Tobias Tweeney? I'm 12 gun Tweeney. I. Uh, just a moment. Uh, Lieutenant Harrigan, uh, come up here. Yes, Your Honor. Are you sure you found 12 guns on this, uh, this man? I did, sir. Are the guns in this courtroom? On the table, Your Honor. Good. 
I wish to see just how he was carrying them. Please put them on him. Yes, Your Honor. Mulligan Schwartz, give me a hand. Yeah. Well, Harrigan and his boys put the guns on Twainy. In his side pockets, one in each hip pocket, one in his waistband, one in each pants pocket, and so forth, until finally Harrigan says to the judge... That's it, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Tweedy. Yes, Your Honor? A step closer to the bench. I wish to see for myself just what kind of a villain you are. Well, go on, go on, Tweedy. Step up. Tweedy, his honor said step up. <laughs> well, we stand there and watch Tweedy. He does not move. It is like he is rooted to the spot. And I figured that now he is scared and wishes he is back in Erasmus. And then, while we watch, he takes a step, and it is like he is pulling his foot out of a puddle of tar. And then... Now I see what happens. Tobias does not fall off the chair in good time Charlie's place. He is just naturally top-heavy from all the guns. And it is the same here. He is not able to walk under the load. And he topples forward on his face. <laughs> While everybody is trying to get a look, a young Dow rushes out of the crowd, and the scene is as follows. To Tobias! Tobias, my darling! Deborah! Deborah! Toby, darling, I love you. I did not realize this until we saw the New York papers in Erasmus. Deborah, you love me. Oh, Toby, you are wonderful. Kiss me, Toby. <laughs> order! There will be order in this court, or I will clear it. <laughs> Young lady, who are you? I am his sweetheart. I love him. So I see. You may sentence him to prison, but I will be waiting for him when he gets out, even though it may be six months. <laughs> oh, quiet, quiet, please. Uh, you live in Erasmus, young lady? All my life. And, uh, Mr. Tweeney, have you known him all your life? Since we were children. Mr. Tweeney. Yes, Your Honor? How long have you been in New York? I... Four days. Four days? All this trouble in only four days? Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> uh, young lady, uh, what does Mr. Tweeney do for a living in Erasmus? He is a very good shoe salesman. Shoe <laughs> salesman! Quiet! Order in the court! Uh, I see. Mr. Tweeney, young lady, I should like to see both of you in my chambers immediately. And Lieutenant Harrigan? Yes, sir, Your Honor. It would be very nice if you came along. We can then discuss the case of... Uh, Twelve gun tweeny at some length. Yes, sir. Courts adjourned. Well, Judge Rascal would be in quite a slick conjure. He has it all figured out. And it is figured out along the right lines, which makes Lieutenant Harrigan uncomfortable, and also some other characters whose names you know. They are forced to stay undercover. Well, Tobias Tweeney and Deborah Weems go back to Erasmus. And it is not until a month later that I hear the payoff, which I will tell you in a minute. comes one night when I'm sitting in Mindy's, partaking of a light snack, and Harry the horse and little Mitzi come in and sit alongside me, which makes me uncomfortable. Harry the horse looks at me for a minute and then speaks as follows. Hello, Broadway. Hello, Harry. Hello, Broadway. Hello, little Mitzi. Broadway, we ought to be mad at you. Harry is right, Broadway. Very mad. Well, why? It is like this. 
You bring that Tobias Tweeney around, and we are all in trouble when the thing is over. It is not me who puts the guns on him. No. But we are not mad at you. <laughs> I am happy about that, Mitzi. You see, Broadway, we are at Good Time Charlie's that night having a peace meeting with Angie the Ox and his boy. And we learned something very interesting. Yeah. Such as what? Such as the fact that Angie the Ox and his boys are carrying guns which we agree not to carry since this is a peace meeting. Yes. Well, I see, but but your guns... That is besides the point. Yes. Broadway... We now know who our friends are. It seems we cannot trust Angie the Ox and his boys. Also, we are very mad at Tobias Tweeney, who is your friend. I renounce him as such, starting now. He is an ingrate. We make it possible for him to marry this doll Deborah, which he does. We make it possible for him to have such a tough reputation that he is elected constable of Erasmus. We make it possible for him as constable to run Joe Trivet from the town. So, we think maybe we are able to hide out in Erasmus until this blows over. But he is an ingrate. We go to see him, and you know what happens? No, I do not know. What? He finds us $50 apiece for carrying concealed weapons. And so ends the saga of Tobias the Terrible, another famous Damon Runyon story. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater, with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville, and the stories are adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. This is a Mayfair production from Hollywood. Hollywood.